This podcast is brought to you by LMU Munich. Um, let's go to the next talk. Uh, now, Alexander Hendorf. Uh, he's, a, he's a member of the board of the EuroPython Society. He's a partner of a company called Königsweg in uh, Mannheim. Yeah. Uh, and he's going to talk about, uh, he's going to give an in introduction to pandas and time series analysis. Uh, give him a big hand, please. Okay, thanks, Alex. Um, uh, yeah, I'm with Koenigsweg. Koenigsweg affiliates uh, high tech startups and the industry. Um, I'm working with Alex on the program work group on EuroPython. Um, and uh, today I'm going to tell you about pandas. And uh, usually this talk is about 45 minutes long, so I shorten it a bit. That's why it's the best off version uh, of pandas, so I might skip at some parts. Um, so, just in short, what is pandas? Pandas is um, a framework for practical real world data analysis. Yeah? To be f it's, it's focused on being fast, efficient, um, and basically close the gap um, between Python and uh, the statistical world. Um, yeah. So Pandas gives you, provides you with a Python workflow where you can do uh, analysis without switching to another language like the R language, which is very popular um, with the statistic, statistical, statistical community. <laughs> So uh, it's a very stable project. It has many commits. It's with Anaconda now as well, uh, who they take care. Uh, so you can totally rely on it um, to work with it even on, on, on business. It won't go away tomorrow. Um, the main features, you don't need any in-depth Python knowledge to work with Pandas. You can basically learn Python, uh, Pandas without, with an introductory level uh, of Python knowledge. It supports um, all common uh, file formats as CSV, um, stuff like Excel, SQL, JSON, whatever, H HDF5. Um, you, for uh, reading data in and writing data out. Uh, it's very good for uh, data, data cleansing. Uh, you can reshape, merge data. Um, it has built and data visualization. Um, and it's very well integrated with the Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, Jupyter Notebooks, everybody knows? Yeah, okay, Jupyter Notebooks is, uh, is basically you can run Python code and data visualization in the browser. So basically it's a toolkit for the data science community to work within the browser and all the slides uh, with code are done with a Jupyter Notebook. So you get an idea uh, in a minute, even if you're not familiar yet. Um, so today, I'm going to get everybody on the same page and uh, introduce you to the basic functionalities of Pandas. In the second part, I'm going to do a little deeper look in the indexes of Pandas uh, with an example of a time series index because it's a really nice example um, to work with. Um, all the code you see today and uh, um, the full version of the slides for the 50, 45 minutes is on GitHub. Um, you can uh, just go there and try it out yourself, including the test data. The test data set is, it's very simple. Uh, it's just like a CSV, a timestamp, and a temperature as float. That's it. That's the super simple um, data set we are going to work with today. Um, so, this is um, our first peek at pandas in code. Oh, we have a fight very well. Very good, okay. Import pandas as PD is just like a convention. You can use any thing you want here, but it's as import numpy as MP for numpy users. So you will very often see sample code with PD. Um, and this is our data set. We just use the pandas method read CSV, pass in the file name and give an instruction or um, data set doesn't include any headers, so we say header none. And Pandas has built two built-in very Unix-like Unix -like functions, head and tail, so we can just read the file to a variable df and then use 
on the variable just like the method hat and it will return the first five um, rows of our uh, data set. And you can use the same with tail. So we have head and tail, can pass in a number, you can specify a default number. Um, so it's really nice uh, just to get a preview and an idea of the data set you're working with. So um, already pointing out, we have some automatic column names here and we also have something we call the index here. So we, in our data set, it's only like the timestamps, as I remember, and the floats. But don't worry, we go a little bit deeper. So um, as a summary of the first thing, as a convention, import pandas as PD is a convention. Um, we've seen an example of reading files in, um, for example, of uh, reading CSV files. This is very flexible. You have like 40 optional parameters you can pass in. Uh, like, is there a header, the data types, parse dates, and many stuff. Um, I'm not going deeper here. Um, just look it up at the documentation. It's well documented. So even if you have some very special, 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 sorry, uh, special CSV files, you can adapt. You can also, like, for example, specify um, the date time, how the date time is formatted when you import it. So basically, usually you should be able to just like read in a file and directly have it at your fingertips to work with uh, once everything's set up. Um, and you can preview data with um, um, head and tail. So build in visualization. It's very simple. Um, I'm just calling our data frame. Um, and this is just like slicing for the first 100 rows. And we just can just ask, well, yeah, just plot it, have it plot. And matplotlib, matplotlib is well integrated in uh, pandas. So we immediately get a line chart by default. And yeah, that's it. Um, we can do a lot of visualization. It's just built in, well connected with matplotlib and pandas. Um, yeah, it's just like some examples. Um, another nice thing is if you uh, plot, plot actually returns the AX object from matplotlib. And so from map, you can even like work with your plot. And, and for example, here, just like add a line as I did here. So I just said, okay, what's the temperature? Like, what's the average temperature? And I just like guessed it and put a red line here. Um, so um, you can even take your plots further if, if needed. But um, this was just like a peak on visualization is built in pandas. Um, it's well integrated with matplotlib. Um, you, it's customizable, it's extendable, um, and, but you can also use alternatives like Bokeh or Seaborn, which are a little bit more modern. Um, this, for example, is uh, Okay, as example. So uh, this, oh, yeah, as you wish. So it's not limited to matplotlib. So let's have a look at the structure of uh, pandas. Um, so pandas, we have just like as we have a series of data. So basically, this could be like the temperatures we just imported or the timestamps, um, and each series is as an index. And uh, I have a database background, so this is like, feels natural to me. You have data, uh, like the series, you have the actual data, but you have also an index, a company. And um, one or more series make up a data frame, and that's the whole concept. Um, actually, it was heavily inspired by R, uh, the R language, and R language, we have series and data frames as well. Um, but be aware, each series in the data frame has also an index. Yeah. Actually, that glues, you could imagine it glues the series together. Uh, but yeah, just to get an idea, because we also ha always have like rep pandas data frames re represented as table, and we call um, basically the series columns and the data r rows. But basically, it's, that's wrong, actually. it's. Yeah, it's a good way we can work with, even in pandas methods and parameters are called columns and, and rows, uh, but actually it's a series, so it's more like in a vertical way. So um, a data series is a one-dimensional labeled series. Like labeled means 
the index. Um, the index is automatically created as we, for example, saw in our uh, import. We didn't specify an index, but we can also specify an index on, in, on the import when we create a data frame. Uh, one reason why pandas is very performant is this, uh, a series has only one data type. So um, under the hood, we can specify the data type, and under the hood, um, we use NumPy data types. So uh, you don't have any mixed data types within a series, which from a Python background you expect. You can put everything in a list, which is the, the close thing um, to a series. Um, so um, let's look at some series. Um, for example, here we, oh here, we are just uh, creating a series um, um, with a panel series method, and I'm just passing in some random numbers um, via the NumPy random function, and basically that's the output. And before, like n is defined as five somewhere in the code, and we have a series automatically created index and the data type, which was also like. Uh, basically guessed that by uh, pandas uh, float 64. Um, we can also create a series of ints, it's the same, and uh, we can also like specify, we can also like pass in integers, but say, oh, pandas, we would like to have this as a float. So pandas is really good in guessing stuff which is right, so, but if your use case needs to be more specific or pandas is guessing wrong or you want to be more explicit, you can define the stuff which is uh, important to you. Of course, um, the index sizes of all uh, series within a data frame have, have to be the same. Um, for example, here's another example where we uh, ex, uh, specify the data type and the index, and actually like the index is just like a, a number, but it's a number which is like just like multiples of five. So, and we also can just like um, use a text label. So basically here we are just like using the alphabet to, uh, as an index for our series. So how can we access data via the series? The series, you can, we can just access it by, as we access a Python dictionary here, um, we can just put in A and it gives us back something. We can pass in um, an integer, gives us back the same. Um, so um, we can ask by label, we can ask by just like a position, and also we can just like ask for multiples by either giving a label or a range, for example, here, and or just like position. And we can even ask for um, the data with a Boolean um, index. And the Boolean index in this case is just like a very simple lambda function, which just says, okay, please give me, please return all um, uh, uh, at the position where uh, it's um, divided, um, 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 uh, uh, it's uh, dividable by, by two. Um, so it's really easy to access the data. And this is just like, as a reminder, this is our tiny data set for this example. And you can also access the data by three met methods. The one is dot lock, which actually is explicitly only looking for the index label. Um, you can use iLock if you explicitly want to look for the position. And ix is basically the index guessing, but actually it's just like first looking for the label, and if the label is not there, it falls back to the position. So basically this is the one if you just like put in something in uh, uh, square brackets, you pandas will use the ix function by default. Um, 
To more nice features, um, we can also just like sample our series um, and just like, okay, just give us a sample. So we'll only return two random uh, uh, um, rows from our data set. And we, for, we can also easily rename our series and just give it some name and it will show up when we just like ask a series. And we can also work with the names if we want to. So now this was just like a crash course and how um, we can select and slice data. Um, uh, I gave you a little introduction in the Boolean uh, indexing and sampling. And let's have a look at the uh, data frame structure. The data frame structure is a two-dimensional labeled data structure. It can contain series, it can contain other data frames, um, and same here, the index is automatically created if not given. On the index, as said, the index basically glues the series together. Um, it's automatically created if not given. Uh, it can be reset or replaced. Um, so we have different types of indexes, we can use just like position, timestamp, time range, ranges even, labels, um, and it can have one or more dimensions, which is also a really nice feature. And, but one thing, if you have a database background or think in a database, if you think about index as like an index in a database, an index in pandas is not unique. You can have an index value multiple times. And there are some use cases where you can specify, take the first um, label or value you find in the index, you can specify, take the last one. Um, there are some useful use cases, but it's easy to point out if you're not sure your data set is, uh, has a unique index. If you need your data set to have a unique index, you can always like reset it. So let's go to some examples, how we can work with series, do some calculations, uh, create and add new series, and how to deal with null values and all methods directly from data, from series and data frames. So here we are back to our temperature set from our house in Denmark. Um, um, I've renamed the columns. You can rename the columns easily just like passing on like a list and it will rename the columns in the same, in, in, the, in an orderly fashion. Um, and as you see, like a nice feature, everything's well connected. If I just plot the same as before, it will just add a label in the plots as well because now the series has a label. And so it's easy. You don't need to worry about how you label your plots. So you can just need to label your data set and the rest is um, done automatically in the background or um, discovered. Um, so let's do something um, usually. When I travel to the US, I'm always dreaming of having a factor to calculate Fahrenheit to Celsius. And I see many people smile, there's no factor, um, but I'm just using it for an example. So um, let's um, calculate uh, our Celsius, uh, add another, um, let's calculate uh, the Fahrenheit uh, value for our Celsius, um, and we can just like select um, our data frame, select uh, the temperature series, and we can just use a map function, which is just like the same as in Python map. So basically map is take each and every value of a list and apply some function to it. That's a map function, it's very simple. So um, here we just pass in our, the method we created here, and that's it. So that's the Fahrenheit values for our um, temperatures. Another thing is, if we do something like that, we just get a series or a, or a data frame returned. It's not directly saved in the series or data frame we are working on. So it's really important, for example, to specify here, like, you know, just like to use our data frame. This is a, a new column, uh, and we just said, okay, please save the result of our operation here. Uh, to a new column, and here we are. It's a new series here, 
uh, with the Fahrenheit value. And we can do just like the, exactly the same with an apply function and pass in an anonymous, anonymous function um, like, yeah, just like a lambda function. It's just like the same. It's a little bit handy, so there's no need to even like define a method before. And yeah, the result is exactly the same. So, um, for example, so actually my, my weird plan is can I have some rule of thumb to get around all these Fahrenheit values when I travel the US? And let's just give it a try. Um, because we can also do um, scalar multiplication or like division with our series. So actually, we're just trying to create a rule of thumb here, save it to a new data series, and just take the temperature Fahrenheit divided by the temperature series and save the result. And actually, wow, I'm surprised. It doesn't look that bad, actually. I can basically just divide everything by four, but when I look a little bit closer with the describe method, um, and the describe method basically gives us statistical insight, so we have a mean, well, factor four, not too bad, but I also see, oh, hmm, it's high standard deviation, the minimum is 2.9, the maximum is like 17, hmm, okay, and like the quartiles distribution uh, doesn't look that well either, so I think actually, I have a bad rule of thumb. So let's rename that column rule of, rule of thumb to just like bad rule of thumb, like bad rule. And this can be easily be done by rename, pass in columns, uh, like an attribute columns, and just pass in a dictionary with the old column name and the new column name. And remember, if we don't explicitly say in place true, this will just like return a new data frame, but I want this to happen on the data frame we're working on, so in place, true, and that's it. So it's a bad rule, and actually, why should I keep a bad rule in my data set? Of course, we can also like, just like drop a series by, with a drop command, and also in, in place, true, and also access is important because we are dropping these values. So axis one is vertical, and axis zero is horizontal. Okay, so we saw how we can modify and work with data series and data frames. Um, I'm going to speed a little bit. Let's look up into data aggregation, which is also just built in. There's nothing else we need to do. So we can just do a simple grouping. So we just group by here by, our, by the temperature and just say, okay, how often do we find uh, the temperature, each temperature in our data set? And we just pass in count uh, or a pan count and this is the result we get back. So these are how often each temperature appears in our data set. And that's really easy. And, and we also can like check, okay, what's like the, the difference compared to the mean temperature? So this basically gives us like a series with the temperature mean across the, our, um, the complete series. And we can just like, um, uh, um, uh, uh, subtract it from the temperature and save it to a new series in our data frame. And, and of course, we can also like, plot this immediately. And that's just like a nest. another nice example. We can also just use the describe method on our timestamp, but this is a little bit confusing because remember, our timestamp is um, a string, and string is saved as object in, uh, uh, in data series. So, um, and for example, this is the temperature, and here's the real distribution. So describe is really good to get an overall impression on the data set. Yeah, thank you. So, um, of course, uh, let's speed it up. Usually we saw the, the percentiles, but we can also like pass in percentiles as we wish, and we get the percentiles on all the data in our data frame. And we can also, because sometimes we have data we're not interested, or it's text data, there's no point. It's pointless to do any percentage, percentiles, because also like include or exclude specific um, data times. So for example, this is just like, um, 
yeah, please do it. Please only describe it with percentile if, if, if the series is a float. And so you see it's less column, it's one column less. Okay, this was a quick view on data aggregation and grouping. So another thing is we, we always are a little bit afraid of null or NAND values because they're just like, if it's a data set from outside, these things might just happen, but it's really easy to find these. There's a is null method, and these we actually like have three rows without any value. And of course, we can just also like check, is there any value with is null and any? And of course, we can also just like get rid of, uh, of them, and we can also replace them by default values or a value we we choose, um, so that's the end of part one. We see I/O, data analysis, visualization, a little bit indexing, and how we can interact and do actual calculations for the data. Now, last four minutes on part two. And I wanna take a little deeper look in, um, the, in the index, uh, with the time series index. Um, you can, we can, uh, use a string and convert it to um, a time series with the PD to date time method. But be aware, actually it's really good in guessing the date format, but it's a little bit US date friendly. Um, so, uh, and the US has month very often as first. But of course you can also explicitly say what's, how your uh, timestamps are formatted and date uh, pandas will take care of the rest. So let's create a time series. So basically we're just using our timestamp series, which is text, still um, pass it on here and save it and actually create a new index. And something we, that's like an immediate effect we have, if I just plot like the same. One thing is this looks very different to this. And why? This series was unordered. They were just like, Ran, they're random, and once we have uh, an index which is in a chronological order, yeah, even like the panels plotting, we'll figure out, oh, okay, that's a time series and time is moving forward and figure out the rest. Um, so, um, this is how our, our data now looks like. This is still the text uh, timestamp. This is the new, newly created index, but that's now um, a daytime index, and the daytime index is uh, something really nice because it had many, it had many nice features, just like built in, and you don't have to worry about any uh, methods or create stuff. For example, um, we can pass it, we can just do a grouping, use our daytime index, and just get the date from that index, and that's just like built in. Although uh, our index is on um, uh, seconds and yeah, count. So actually these are like, just like how often we encounter, uh, we have a measure meant for each and every day. And we can even do something like this, get like the uh, week and plot the mean over weeks, or we can check the temperatures of weekdays. So I have to rush a little bit to get to the end. Or we can also like do something like that is asked us this question, is in our data set probably the temperature on weekends different to the temperature on weekdays? Of course, this is a tiny data set. This is just like an example. And we can just like um, create a new series. Uh, it's a weekday, ask for the weekday. Um, check if the weekday is in five or six. Actually, this is not US, this is European standard. So the month, we start at a Monday and this is the result. Okay, I'm instructed. There's some more examples. Uh, look up the slides. One thing I want to like to show, it's really easy. You can even like um, slice on dates, just like passing in like formatted dates and it will, and Pandas will do the rest for you. And yeah, that's basically it. And you can also like resample, but I don't think I'm allowed to show here. This is just like resample the data set by day and save the max. Uh, but look up the slides. I think once you have a basic understanding of pandas, you will um, see. 
And I also included a resampling schedule. This is not so easy to find online. OK, um, yeah, thank you very much. If you have any questions, ask me. Thank you.